Hey guys, welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, I want to show you one of my most favorite tools in Inkscape, and that's the Trace Bitmap tool. So you go to Path, and then you go to Trace Bitmap when you have a, an image selected. So we're going to be playing with that today. It's a really, really cool tool. In the last video, we traced using the Bezier tool. We traced an image of a guy falling. We're going to do that again, only we're not going to use the Bezier tool. So I'm going to drag this image in. This is an image. You can find out where we got it in the last video. We just went to pixabay.com and searched person. We downloaded this free image, so you can follow along if you want to do that. But now, we're going to do this again, only instead of tracing it, oops, control Z. I'll make sure I lock this like I like to do. So instead of tracing it, like we did last time, we like zoomed in and we traced every single point of here and created this whole little outline. Well, we're not going to do that this time. We're going to just use this tool that's built into Inkscape. So we go to, we select the image, and then we go to Path, and then we go to Trace Bitmap. And it comes up with these different options. So brightness cutoff and a certain threshold. We'll just leave it here right now, and we'll click Update. So if we hit Update, it shows us a little preview of what it'll look like if we were to go ahead and tr try and trace all the lines of this image based on the brightness of the pixels. So that looks... Okay, let's just see what that looks like. So if we hit OK, it'll take a minute and it'll actually do that. So it traced, it created a uh, path here, and we can drag and see what it looks like. So this is what it's created based off of this image, and this is all a vector path. So if we zoom in, we can see that's actually pretty cool detail. So we see this guy here, and uh, yeah, I like it. And so we can actually go in now, if we edit the different nodes, we can come in and edit different parts of this and change it too. So essentially, it did what we just tried to do um, with the Bezier tool. It didn't do as good a job though, if you notice, because look here in the face. Oops, where am I at? Uh, I'll just close this. So here in the face, it's a little bit, it didn't get the whole face, but it did get some of the eyebrow. It got some more detail than we actually got. Got some detail in the hair. So it's not a complete silhouette, but instead it just traced everything based on the uh, the brightness of the pixel. Super cool, huh? But the thing is, it's all tied together here. I'm not sure if there's different layers. We can tell. We can check by going Control shift g and see if we can ungroup anything here. And it looks like it's all just one level. So we'd need to cut this out, which we can do. But first, I'm just going to delete this. Let's come back up and let's try again. So we click on our image. And then we go to Path, Trace Bitmap. Um, so instead of doing the brightness cutoff, well, we can just change the threshold. So we can lower this to maybe and change the 4 to a 1 and go update. And then it gets just the person, but it doesn't get all the person. So now we don't have that. Uh, if, we, if we hit OK, we see we get this kind of thing going. So we get more detail in the shirt, but it's a lot lighter. Uh, so it's still, this isn't perfect for what we want to do. Although it is kind of cool. If we did want to keep this, let's just keep it for fun. Let's turn it red and let's bring it over here. Because then what we can do is go to our edge detection and do the same thing. So we hit update. And now it's going to show us a preview of the edge detection. Oh, nothing selected right now. We have to make sure we have our uh, picture selected that we want to trace, our bitmap. And it has to be a bitmap. If we select vector, it won't do anything. It has to be a bitmap that we're tracing, which this is. It's a JPEG image, I think. So we hit update. And now it'll show, OK. So let's change this threshold. Let's lower, lower this down to maybe 3, 5, hit update. Uh, that's still not quite where we want. Let's go way down to 0 0.06. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go down even lower. Oh, not to 0. Update. So 0 0.10. We'll hit OK. So now we've got another thing traced. Oh, i got a little piece of something up here, it looks like. But that's pretty neat, huh? And so now we have this outline here which did a pretty good job of, of doing the edge detection. It wasn't doing, it wasn't tracing based off of the brightness of the pixels. It was tracing based off of the edge that it could find, like a hard edge, which I guess probably uses some sort of brightness to detect anyway. But now we can move this over. Let's send this to the top layer. And now we have like, we can kind of merge and create a really cool looking thing. Maybe turn this blue or like, yeah, I don't know, like a green. So we can create a really cool look by merging these two together. That's pretty neat, huh? Let's see if I can select both of them at the same time. Ah, click and then shift click. Click, shift, click. There we go. 
So now we have this cool kind of effect going on here. And uh, we can keep doing this. We can get different layers that we want to out of this. So we can cl click our bitmap again, and then this is still opened up. So whatever's clicked here will just get updated. So we can go to color uh, quantization. That's a word you don't use very often. Color quantization. So we click update. And what that's going to do, it's going to create something like this, but it's going to do it with eight different colors. So I'm going to do it just to illustrate. I'll do four colors and hit update. So using just four colors, it's going to it's going to basically break this image into four different colors uh, thresholds. So I'll click uh, click OK, and then we can come down here. And so that's created a pretty cool thing. And we've got different colors here. So if we hit Control Shift G and ungroup. We can see there's different, there should be different. I did four, right? Control Shift G. Okay, maybe it's just did, for whatever reason, it did two colors, just black and white. That's kind of cool too, though. So just kind of play around with this, and you can see. So let's let's take it up again to six, do update, update, do OK. I'm trying to get different colors here. I think we can get it. No, it's doing all black. Do I have a setting that's only doing black somewhere? I should make sure I'm not, because this can do this can do colors also, but for some reason it's just doing black right now. Uh, oh, colors. Oh, I see. So on this is a single. I was on single scan, which is why it's just doing black. If I want to do multiple colors, I click here on colors, and then I go down to four. While it's selected and hit update, we view what it looks like. That'll look cool. Now I hit OK, and now what it's doing is uh, just using four colors. It's creating a, a version of this. Which is how you know you see this could be like a T-shirt print of this because it really only has four colors. Is that awesome? And we can break out these colors now. We can go Control Shift G, and now we can see we have our background color. All right, we can delete that if we want. We can delete uh, these ones here if we want to, and we can see just these different parts. So they're all kind of hooked to each other. And there's a, I'll show you in the next video how to get rid of this down here. Because there's not really, we could use like the erase tool, I suppose, and try and erase it out, but uh, we don't, we're not going to do that. There's no, a better way to do it. Um, yeah, awesome tool, isn't it? Pretty pretty cool. So let's come up here and let's go to. We can do brightness steps and just kind of see what that looks like. So brightness steps is going to be similar to this, um, to, to the brightness cutoff. We got we can do just grays and do like five different grays and update and see what it looks like in five different shades of gray. Or we can do three different shades of gray here. Uh, three is a bit too little. Let's do six. Hit OK. And now this is going to be the last one. We actually had some reds, but this time it's just all just grays. So it looks similar to the other one. Maybe that's too many because see the sky is two different shades. But yeah, play with this. Um, it's awesome, and you can use it on vector art too. If you bring in like a dirty, like a small little, um, like a fave icon, like from a website. And it has little pixelation and it's um, kind of messy. You can run this on it and kind of clean it up. Then you can scale it much larger. If ever you have a tiny little a tiny little thumbnail of a like a vector graphic, let's see here. Should we just do one real quick? If we find a little logo that's like too small, these are all going to be pretty good quality. But sometimes you'll find a really small grainy logo that's just that you want to scale up massively and put it on a billboard. Well, what you'll do is just run that trace, and you don't have the source file for it. If all you have is a teeny tiny little um, uh, logo, then you can bring it in here, trace a bitmap on it, and then scale it up much larger. And you can clean up you know, those little portions as well. So that's the trace bitmap tool, one of my very favorite tools of all time in Inkscape. And it is super powerful, especially if you want to do like t-shirt prints or create any kind of a print quickly based off of a real photograph. So I hope you liked this video. Comment, subscribe, like below, and um, let me know how you use this tool because I'm curious of other applications you can use it for. I'm sure the sky's the limit. Appreciate you watching. We'll catch you on the next video.